Well, hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting episode here on My Gardener. I am here at the garden again, but not because I'm actually giving you guys a garden update, but because last night Cindy and I drove the bees up to the cottage. And let me tell you, uh, we don't have any footage of that because there's no way I could explain how nerve wracking that was having 50 plus thousand bees in the back of a car. It was not something that I really <laughs> felt comfortable with. And um, every bump you kind of just like hunched in the seat because you weren't sure if anything was gonna come flying out. I and mean, we taped the edges and everything, but it was just the whole fact of the matter of being in such close quarters with so many bees um, and, and traveling 60 miles an hour down the road. So um, yeah, we don't have any footage of that, but I'm gonna show you the bees, but I also want to explain some stuff about the garden. We originally got the bees for pollinating the garden and a lot will, but I also wanna um, show you some stuff about uh, a lot of times people think that they want to get bees to pollinate their garden and say oh it's gonna be so productive that only applies if you're growing certain things because um, before I had done a lot of research I thought okay they'll just pollinate everything but really they will only pollinate about half the stuff in my garden which will make it more productive don't get me wrong but like tomatoes I was hoping they'd pollinate my tomatoes they don't pollinate tomatoes your uh, your broccoli and your kale and your uh, cabbage, they can't pollinate those because you're harvesting them before they go to flower. Now, if you are uh, letting them go to flower, they're going to um, be pollinated by the honeybees because they do like the brassica family flowers, but you're obviously, if you're harvesting it in your garden, it's gonna be gone uh, before, you, before you have a chance to even give the bees any pollen. Now, when it comes to cucumbers, bees love them. Anything in the squash family, zucchini, uh, pumpkins, uh, watermelon, uh, like all those things. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Um, we also have uh, uh, bush beans, bush beans and pole beans. Bees love them. Corn, bees do not pollinate those. That's so actually wind pollinated. That's why they have the tassels. Then we also have beets. Now the beets would be great again, but they're going to be harvested before the bees get there. Also celery. They love celery, but we're obviously harvesting the celery before then as well. They love basil, so we planted some basil. So when that flowers, um, I mean, usually you cut off some of the flowers, but we'll leave some for the bees and we'll take some off as well to prolong the life of it. And then we also have potatoes. Some bees will like potatoes, but it's not their first choice. And reason being is the, uh, the pollen that the potato flower actually gives off is not very high in protein. It's high in carbohydrates. And for bees to collect pollen, they need a pollen that's high in uh, protein and high in carbohydrates because that helps them produce honey for their hive. So um, it's not their first choice. A lot like pine trees produce pollen. Pine trees in the springtime, you shake them and it's just a cloud of yellow smoke. It's, or yellow pollen actually, uh, but it's, it's dense, it's all pollen. They won't go to that unless it's a very last resort, a lot like you wouldn't uh, with, with potatoes. So they are there for them, but we do have lots. Uh, and then parsnips we planted, they don't go to parsnips, um, but that's pretty much everything. Onions, they will go to onions if they, if they form a scape, but like I said, we're harvesting the onions before they're going to go into their scape form anyways. So there's really only going to be about half the garden designated for, uh, for honeybee pollination, really. So we were a little bit disappointed with that. Um, but nonetheless, there's going to be lots of stuff for them to eat. There's gonna be so much for them to pollinate in our garden still. So we're gonna take what we can get. And uh, I'm gonna show you back at the place uh, that we have the honeybees. And I'm gonna show you some of the amazing stuff that we have back there that's already in flower and will soon be in flower that the bees love. So if you're interested in getting honeybees, you have to make sure that you have a lot of uh, pollen producing plants they like for them. So we have uh, three hives. The fourth one we end up not getting. Uh, so we have three established hives and for each hive you need an acre luckily this property is about five acres and they can travel outside of our property there's no boundaries it's just you need at least an acre of producing poll uh, pollen producing flowers uh, for each colony that you have so up here we have i mean you have potentially a hundred thousand acres and um, they're all it's just loaded with pollen producing flowers so I'm not concerned about that, but on our property alone, we have a lot. So come back here and follow me, and uh, I think you're really gonna like this episode. 
So the first plants we have here are wild thistle. These are those spiky, everyone confuses them with dandelions um, because they look just like a spiky form of a dandelion. These are wild thistle. They'll produce a very large uh, purple ball. And that flower stalk, the bees love, they go crazy for. Then over here in kind of um, hidden beneath here, you have some wild clover. This is just a different form of wild clover. It's got a little yellow flower. Some different forms of wild clover have um, a pinkish purple flower. Other ones just have your typical white flower. So there's lots of different varieties, but the bees love them all. And those are in bloom. The uh, wild thistle's not in bloom yet. Then you also have um, these uh, just uh, daisies here. And these daisies produce a ton of pollen. The bees love them. And um, what people don't realize though, is that these are actually not in bloom yet. When they're, when they're in bloom, they will actually become puffy with, with pollen. These are not actually, the flowers have not opened yet. People think that this is a flower. This is not a flower. The daisy actually uses these as, they're called pseudo petals. And the pseudo petals are fake petals. That's what pseudo means. The actual flowers are in here and there are thousands of them and they're not yet opened. But when they do, there'll be lots of pollen. All right, so, um, oh, and then also you have these. Um, I can't remember what wildflower these are, uh, but they're the same thing uh, as, as the daisies here. These are all pseudo petals around here, these little white, little hairy things. But then inside there is the flower that's not yet opened yet. And there'll be lots of pollen there that the bees love. So come on back here. I got something really exciting for you all. And this flower here, I can't remember. It's just a kind of a wild tree, uh, but it produces these beautiful, almost uh, star-shaped flowers. And they are loaded with pollen. The bees love them. And it kind of has a red, well, it actually does have a red stalk. It's kind of a red burgundy stalk here. And, um, and that's one, just one way to, I, I always identify it. And it has spear-shaped leaves. And so if you have a lot of this on your property, don't cut it down. If you have just a wild flower field like we do, um, you know, we have three acres of wildflower fields, so we don't ever cut these down and they just kind of grow wild here. But the bees love them. And this is actually a example of the purple clover that's just now coming into bloom. It's a beautiful uh, clover variety, I love it. And they're actually very sweet. If you take out the, the, the flower, uh, individual flower pieces themselves, you can actually suck on the white part and uh, you get a little sweet nectar as well. But one way you can identify the purple clover is by this white arrow in the middle of the flower, uh, in the middle of the leaf petal there. And this is the thing that we're most excited about because as you can see, the bees are already loving this plant. This is wild buffalo berry. And this plant I can see probably about three or four bees already on it. And wild buffalo berry is actually an edible berry. And fun fact for you all, the berry from the wild buffalo berry can be made into jelly. And that jelly is called royal jelly. And that's the same thing that the bees will actually feed the queen um, as, the, as the queen is in its pupa form, in its actual, uh, in its super seizure cell. They will feed it a royal jelly. And that's what you can make from these buffalo berries here. But these buffalo berries are on our property like crazy. We have probably, I would say, close to seven or eight of these trees. It is in the olive family. And the, uh, the tree just produces these beautiful, fragrant yellow flowers, as you're seeing. And the, the, oh my goodness, the butterflies and the honeybees just go crazy. And that's why we, that's the ultimate reason why we moved up these up here, is because there are so many flowers that they love here that just are not at the house. And lastly, we have the wild strawberry. There are so many of these on our property. There's probably, oh man, there's at least thousands, I'd say. And there are, uh, they're just kind of like a, a, they're a very, very, very small, um, non, I guess uh, it's a non-cultivated variety that is just, a, it just gives a very small, almost like an alpine strawberry. So the reason why we put this branch here is because once we have taken off the tape, which we already did, 
uh, the bees naturally have a flight pattern when they were at the house for so long. And so what you want to do is put something in front of the doorway that's going to catch their attention. So we just put a branch in front of the doorway. And that way when they come out, they can't just hit the landing pad and fly away. They actually will investigate what this is and that's enough time for them to realize that they're in a different location. Then what they'll do is so crazy, and this is what I love about honeybees, is they will actually find where the sun is by crawling either, you know, like on the object like you're seeing right now, or they will kind of crawl on the wall there and they will locate where the sun is and then they will fly around the hive twice and then fly away. They will never fly more than twice. They will never fly less than twice. It is exactly, precisely two times around the hive and then they'll fly away. And it is so amazing at how they locate where they're at. And that is actually how they um, can tell, you know, where they need to go based on um, the direction that other bees are telling them that pollen is and stuff. So it is just, it is very awe-inspiring and it's been amazing. Now I do have the, uh, the sugar water still out because I wanted to give them something to be a very close source until they were friendly and acclimated uh, with their environment. So um, yeah, so I got, uh, I got that there for now, but I'll probably be removing that in a week because they won't even need it with all these flowers around here. And lastly, how can I forget about this plant? I completely forgot about it for the time being, but I did not forget about it altogether. Don't you worry. This is goldenrod, and a lot of people hate goldenrod, especially me around the fall time. Not gonna lie, it's a very beautiful plant. However, I detest it because I'm very allergic to it, and my nose will become very congested, and uh, just, I'm miserable for like three weeks while this thing is blooming until the frost. I love the frost then, <laughs> but no longer because now that I have bees that are going to be pollinating this goldenrod, I will actually eat some of their pollen that has the goldenrod pollen spores in it, and I will become more immune to it, which is the beauty about pollen, and I recommend everyone research it. Um, it's called pollen immunization, or uh, honey immunization, sorry, and um, it will help you become more immune to whatever you are allergic to, whatever pollen is in the air, and that is so great, so I love that. But the main reason why I love this is because you need to have on your property on that one acre for that one hive, you need to have flowers that occur at all seasons of the year, um, besides winter, obviously. So spring, summer, fall, you need to have different flowers flowering so that the bees can continuously have a food source. And this plant is so important to my honey plot here because the bees love it and it produces in the fall. It is one of the only plants that really produces heavy amounts of pollen in the fall but the bees go crazy for it. And I think it's nature's way of saying, you're ready to shut down for the winter time. Hello bee. You're ready to shut down for the winter time. You need to produce enough honey to get through the winter. So I'm going to give you an excellent food source. And this gives the most pollen out of any plant that you'll see flowering in the spring, summer, or fall. And ironically, it happens in the fall, right before they have to produce enough honey to survive through the winter. So nature's just amazing like that. And, um, so we will not be mowing these down, we'll be letting them flower, and, uh, and it's going to be a giant pollen field for uh, the whole year. So I'm very glad to uh, have these flowers here and to be able to walk you all around to show you the flowers that we have on this plot here. And um, I definitely recommend growing some wildflowers as well, just taking a wildflower mix, tilling up a little strip, and throwing some wildflower mix in. Not only does it look beautiful, but it gives them a, an additional food source close to home. Uh, that's all I have for this episode, but thank you all for tuning in. I thank Cindy for being the camera woman here for this episode, and, um, and just have some bees. If you're allowed to have some bees, look into it. I think it's a great experience, and I personally would not have traded it for the world. So um, thank you for coming along with me. And as always, this is Emma Gardner reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll talk to you all later. See you next episode. Bye.